and welcome to our lab. My name is Fia. I'm originally from Belgium and I'm a research assistant here in Anders Nukiers group. I am standing in the heart of our main lab, where we perform the majority of our daily routine experiments. To this day, we are around 15 people in the team, mostly composed of young international scientists. Hi Anders. Hi. We have some visitors in the cyberspace today. Mm -hmm. Would you mind telling them what our research is about? Sure, no problem. Welcome, I'm Anders Nukier and I'm heading this uh, research group. And we are interested in mechanisms that underline psychiatric disorders and memory formation. In particular, we study a receptor for a family called the sordolins, which has been genetically linked to a number of psychiatric diseases like autism, ADHD, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorders. But they also control important aspects of memory, and if their function goes wrong, it causes Alzheimer's disease. In particular, our lab has pioneered the research field and found that these receptors are important for neurodevelopment, the integrity of neurons, whether neurons have survive or whether they would die, how they form the circuits, and also how they control synapse formation. Uh, even though we, have underst we understand a lot, there's still very, very far to go. And we are trying to now rule out what the receptors is doing at various levels from the molecule to the cell and to the integrated organism like mouse and zebrafish, and also combine it with human genetics uh, conducted by some of our colleagues. Uh, in particular, we use a large combination of methods, look like uh, uh, engineered zebrafish and mice, electrophysiology, cell biology, advanced imaging, omics, and behavioral studies. I don't know, Pierre, why would you show them uh, how the labs look like here? Sure, no problem. Let's go to the cell couch lab, where we grow our neurons. This is our cell culture lab, where we grow human and mouse cells. We grow them in the cell culture incubators that keep the conditions similar to the human body. We work with the cells in ventilated woods that can create a sterile environment and thus avoid contaminations such as bacteria or yeast. Hi Lille, can we interrupt you? Of course. Could you tell our visitors what you're currently doing? Of course. Hi everybody, my name is Lillian Tisiswa. I'm assistant professor here at the Department of Biomedicine in the uh, NICIOS group. I'm originally from Sweden. So as many of you already know, uh, many neurological disorders have been characterized by change, morphological changes in the neurons. In order for me to be able to uh, study these morphological changes, I culture cells both the neurons and the other nerve cells in cultures. Once I have the cells in culture, I can then modify them either genetically or uh, pharmacologically in order to see how these changes come about and how we can either reverse them or stop them. Would you like to see how the cells look like? In addition to looking on uh, morphological changes in these neurons, we can also look at the protein expression. Pia, could you please look at the synaptic proteins expression in these cultures for me, please? Sure, no problem. I'll ask our lab technician, Andrea, to help me with that. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Pia. Could you help me with a Western blot today? Of course. My name is Andrea, I'm a lab technician, and today I'm going to show you how to load the gel.
Kristin will be happy. There are indeed protein changes in her cell cultures. Now the next step is to look inside a mouse brain. I will ask our PhD student Vichka how to do that. everyone, my name is Lutska and I'm from Czech Republic and I'm a PhD student in Anna Sizla. I heard that you need some help with cutting a brain tissue. I'm currently processing my embryonic brains of 14 days of age. The brains have been fixed and in formaldehyde and dehydrated using saccharose. The cryostat is a microton which operates within a temperatures of minus 20 degrees. And thanks to such conditions, I can cut a very thin tissue slices with around 14 microns. Let me show how it works. And this is the result of a well-cut brain slices that can be now stained using immunofluorescence for confocal microscopy imaging. My supervisor Alcha is already imaging at the confocal microscope, so let's go to visit her. Now we are in the confocal microscope room where we image cells, tissue slices or small organisms. Prior to the imaging, we have to label RNA molecules or proteins of interest using fluorescent probes called fluorochromes. These probes will light up when exposed to the excitation light from a microscope's laser. This approach enables us to visualize what is going on in each cell. Hi all, you just came in time. I want to show you something very cool. My name is Alcha. I'm originally from Czech Republic and I'm currently working as a postdoc in Anna's Nikia lab. Today I'm imaging the whole brain of zebrafish embryos and for that I'm using a hormone in situ hybridization. Look how beautiful it is! I can already see that our transgenic fish have underdeveloped brains. This can have implications for mice and humans too. Now we have to see if our transgenic mice behave differently. Let's ask Dongik how is it going in the behavior room. We are now in the animal facility where we keep our mice in a clean and calm environment. To evaluate neurological and psychiatric disturbances, we often subject the mice to behavioral testing. We can examine motor skills, anxiety, depression, curiosity, memory-related tasks, social interaction, and so on. We will now visit Donkick, our expert on mice behavior. Hi Donkick, how are you mice today? Hi Pia. Hi everyone. I've been expecting you. I'm Donkick from South Korea, and I'm also postdoc here in Analysis Rep. Beer testing is time consuming, so I spend much time here. To have reproducible experiments, our mice need to be habituated to new environment first. Thus, we need the cages in this ventilated cabinet for some time. Once ready, we prepare the setup in the baby room. Today, I'm performing the open field test, which will tell us whether our mice suffer with any anxiety or poet type activity. It takes a few weeks to finalize the experiment, so I will tell you the results next time. Perhaps they can explain some of the findings from the clinic. Fantastic, Donkick. We are looking forward to that. So now we have a small overview of how an average working day looks like in our lab. We are a very international and interactive group who likes to be in a good mood. Whilst we all have our personal project, we also collaborate with each other to accelerate the progress, share ideas and gain new insights. This includes daily coffee, weekly lab meetings or monthly journal clubs where we discuss our results and new exciting papers. We also like to organize social activities such as Friday bars, lab retreats and going to conferences together. 
We all were in your position at one point, so please don't hesitate and come forward to ask us any questions. <laughs> I am standing in the heart of our main lab, where we perform the majority of our daily routine experiments. To this day, we are around 15 people in the God. team. I am standing in the heart of our main lab, where we perform the majority of our daily routine experiments. To this day, we are around 50 people. 50, I said 50. <laughs> I'm particularly interested in understanding the underlying principles of psychiatric disorders. In particular, we study diseases like uh, Alzheimer's disease. This is fucking not a neuropsychiatric <laughs> disorder. Welcome to our main lab. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we do electrophysiology, cell uh, trafficking, fuck it, and <laughs> No. Welcome to our main lab. Hi, my name is Pia and I'm a... Uh, uh, Sorry. Just a second, I have to eat.